Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is another video on magnetic circuit. And here uh, I'll be solving example 8.1. Now let's see the question first of all. A core with three legs is shown in figure. So this is the core, it has three legs. Its depth is five centimeters. So depth is given five centimeters. That means inside the page, it is five centimeters. And there are 200 turns on the leftmost leg. So this is given 200 turns. And remember the current is also given, so 2 ampere current is flowing. The relative permeability of the core, which we denote by mu r, can be assumed to be 1500 and it will not vary. Question number one, what flux exists in each of the three legs of the core? Question number two, what is the flux density in each leg? And then it is saying that assume a 4% increase in effective area of the air gap due to fringing. So we'll discuss this as we proceed. Now the first point keep in mind, when in the magnetic circuit, when we talk of magnetic uh, flux, it is equivalent to current in electrical circuit. So keep in mind this relation that we need to find current or flux. And for that we need the voltage and the resistance. Now this is voltage. This is the magnetomotive force N into I. 200 into 2, that is 400 is our voltage or magnetomotive force. Now all we need to do is find the resistance from this circuit, which is called reluctance in the magnetic circuit. So that should be our first aim to find the total reluctance. Okay, so this is given as I mentioned. Now we draw uh, mid lines uh, between the extremes of the area, and this will give us the length or the mean length. Couple of things now here. Yeah? You can see this is the source, so we can represent in terms of electrical circuit, it has a source here, voltage source. This portion up to this point will give one reluctance. So we, we call that reluctance as R1. This will give two reluctances. One is the total due to the core which we call R2, and another one due to this magnetic gap, or sorry, air gap. This air gap will also provide a bigger reluctance, so we call this reluctance as R3. So these two are in series from the equivalent circuit, and then in parallel there is another reluctance or another portion of the core, so this will give us R4. Now we'll name the length, this length from here or from here all the way up to this point is called L1. This is L2. This gap is L3. And the right hand side is L4. So first of all, we need to calculate all the L's. Why we need to calculate all the L's? Because this is the formula of reluctance. Reluctance is L divided by permeability of the material, mu r. Mu zero is the permeability of air. And A is the area of cross-section. So we need two things from the circuit. One is the length, and the other is area of cross-section. So let's first of all find the length. Now L1, if you start from this point, up to this point, you can see it is half of 15. Up to here, it is 15. So half of 15 is 7.5. Then this whole of 25. And half of uh, 9, so the 4.5. This is the upper arm. Then we come down. Now this is also, if you now look on this side, half of 9, so 4.5. 25, 25. And bottom also half of 9 up to this point of so 4.5. Then we turn from here, right? 
again now this portion is 4.5 this portion is 25 same as ever and this portion is 7.5 so total is 108 centimeter which will convert into meter by dividing it by 100 so 1.08 meter this is l1 now l2 you can see this portion is half of nine so 4.5 then this is 25 25 and then half of nine so 4.5 25 4.5 is 34 this length is very very negligible so technically we should have subtracted uh, this length but there is no point uh, subtracting this very small length so we'll just keep it as it is so l2 is uh, 34 centimeter which is equal to 0 0.34 meter now we come to this l3 now this is given so l3 is 0 0.4 centimeter which is uh, converted into meter becomes 0 0.004 meter and finally l4 is same as l1 exactly same dimension but for your information i'll just copy from here so we're going from here 7.5 then 25 then 4.5 and then we're going up 4.5 25 uh, 4.5 and then again 4.5 25 and 7.5 so this is also 108 centimeter or 1.08 meter so we have calculated all the four lengths noted down here now we need to calculate the areas so i've just drawn it here you can see this is of nine centimeter and the depth is five all the way for for the whole circuit so this area will be in terms of a meter uh, 0 0.09 multiplied by 0 0.05 converting centimeter into meter so this will this is one area same area will be on this side but this area is bigger this is 15 and depth 5 so 15 centimeter depth 5 centimeter will be 0 0.15 into 0 0.05 meter so let's use these areas now to calculate r r1 r1 we are using this part we'll use l1 which we have calculated 1.08 uh, mu r the permeability is given 1500 mu naught is the permeability of the air this is fixed 4 pi into 10 raised to the power minus 7 and it's handy per meter and then the area a1 same area as this one for so 0 0.09 multiplied by 0 0.05 and if you solve it using your calculator, you get the answer 127.3 kilo ampere turns per Weber. Remember this kilo turns to the power 3. So R1 we have calculated. Now we calculate R2 exactly the same way except that L2 and A2 will be different. L2 is 0 0.34. A2 in this case is 15 uh, by 5 or 0 0.15 into 0 0.5. Solving, we get R2. Now, R3, you have to be careful. R3 is the uh, resistance or reluctance of the air gap. So, for that, the formula will be changed. Mu R will be uh, uh, 1 or it will be uh, not present because it, there's no. Uh, material inside it is just the air so we'll just use air permeability which is this value and then area is same as r2 area so this area but in the question he has given that there is a four percent increase due to fringing now what is fringing what happens when the magnetic flux passes from here it concentrates in the center but the outside is tries to divulge so like this it goes out slightly and that is why this area is increased and that area increase in area is four percent so we'll multiply it by 1.04 and so r3 we have calculated r4 will be same as 
R1 because all parameters are same. So this is. So we have calculated all the four R's. These are the values. And now this is our equivalent electrical circuit. Now we'll take help of this to find the current or the total flux. Now for that you can see these two are in series and the combination is in parallel with this. And then this total added with R1 will give us the total reluctance. So we'll use this formula now. Total reluctance is R1 plus this parallel R4, so R2 plus R3 in parallel with R4. So we'll get this equation. I hope you can follow this. Plugging in the values, we get total reluctance 170.2 kilo ampere turns per weapon. Okay, now we have found the total reluctance. Now we again recall the question, what flux exists in each of the three legs? So first of all, we have to find total flux or as if we are calculating the total current. So for total current, we have to divide uh, the voltage divided by total resistance. So we'll exactly use same technique, total current or total flux. The so flux total is the voltage or MMF divided by R total. So this is our total flux or keep in mind it is equivalent to total current. Now we know the total current and it will be the same current in this branch because this whole resistance in series with this. So the total current will flow from here or total flux will flow from here. So left branch uh, flux is same as the total. So flux left is equal to flux total, same value. Now what will happen here? Just imagine that this is a parallel circuit. We have to calculate current by KCL. So we'll exactly use the same technique, total current divided by total resistance multiplied by opposite arm. So let's see that. So five center is phi total, uh, total current divided by total resistance, that is this, all these resistances or reluctances multiplied by opposite arm. So this is R4 is opposite arm, so multiply by opposite arm. Now putting all the values, we calculate the center flux to be 0 0.00156 Weber. And now the right flux, same technique, now we'll multiply by this arm, opposite arm of uh, uh, R4 is R2 plus R3. So multiplying by R2 plus R3, and this is our phi, uh, sorry, there's a mistake here. This would be phi right, not uh, center. Okay. So these were the three uh, fluxes we had calculated. Now we need to calculate the second part of the question, the flux density. So this is easy. I hope you recall what is flux density. The total flux is the flux density multiplied by area. Or we can say that the flux density is total flux divided by area. So B left or the flux density left is the Phi left divided by its area, the so left area and the right area is same. So using this, so this is our uh, flux density on the left arm, then flux density of the center arm, phi center divided by its area, its area is now you can you, you have to use this area. And uh, flux right is same way, the flux right and the area is same, so it is. 0 0.176 Tesla. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.